Well, good morning. Welcome in the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior, to those of you who are here in person and those who are joining us on Facebook. Are we on today? Yeah. Hey, good. Um, the only good thing about, was it last Sunday or two Sundays ago that we weren't on? We didn't think we were on, but we were too, yeah. But uh, I saw so many posts by clergy friends that Sunday that they were having trouble with Facebook. I'm going, oh good, it wasn't necessarily us. Uh, but we never know. Um, the good news today is that uh, COVID-19 infection rates continue to be low, which is good. Um, so uh, uh, we uh, will continue worshiping in person. Uh, still wearing our masks, still social distancing and all that. That will go on for a while. Um, saw the most wonderful cartoon yesterday. I, if I had been thinking, I would have uh, copied it and put it up on the screen today, but it was uh, Dr. Fauci driving a station wagon down the highway, and the highway sign said, normal, that's what they were heading. Must be in Illinois, you know. But they were heading for normal, and all the people in the back, back seat were saying, are we there yet, are we there yet? And Fauci would say, no, not there yet, but we're getting there, and that's good. Uh, so, uh, our Sunday schools are meeting, so uh, if you were a part of a Sunday school, uh, be sure to uh, join. The uh, Unity class right now is meeting with, uh, uh, come on, Soul Cafe. I don't know why I can't think of that. Uh, and uh, because some of their folks that have been a part of Soul Cafe for a little while while they were doing it online are out of town, they're continuing, they're doing, holding it here, but they're also doing it online using the platform called Zoom. Uh, so if any of you would like to join in on that, you have to be invited to be part of a Zoom meeting. It's just an email and then it's got the link to click, so it makes it real easy. Uh, but uh, Jan Gothrop is the one you would want to contact to get on his invitation list. And he sends out an invite and uh, that way you can participate in that class, and if, if, even if you still don't want to uh, uh, be here in person for whatever reasons. Um, our second mile uh, mission giving emphasis for the month of March is the Manchester Fellowship of Churches. Uh, and our goal this month is $500. Um, so uh, if you have that on your uh, heart, then uh, please give. Candy Quick is going to be starting a Bible study on Sunday, March 28th, uh, it's two weeks uh, from today, called Faith and Fire, Elijah. Um, it'll be a seven-week uh, class, be at uh, 4.30 in Fellowship Hall. Uh, she's thinking about whether she's going to also offer it by Zoom or not. Uh, there is a study guide uh, that needs to be purchased, so uh, you can get it yourself. Information is in your bulletin, or you can contact uh, Candy, I think she was going to order several. Um, also, choir practice has resumed, so uh, if you're interested in singing in our choir, uh, contact Terry, and after he stops jumping for joy that he has a new voice, um, he'll let you know more about it, but they're meeting uh, here in the sanctuary, 7.45 p.m. on Wednesdays to rehearse. Um, and you planning on something for Easter Sunday? I'm planning for Palm Sunday oh, and oh yeah. Easter Sunday. Palm Sunday, good. Yes, sir. We've got some choirs, uh, college students that can be with us on Palm Sunday, but not Easter. Okay. And please, we, we need more people to come start singing with us again. All right. So uh, if you're available and you can do that, now is the time to get started. Are there any other announcements? Seeing none, let us prepare our hearts for worship. Oh, I do have one more announcement for those of you on Facebook. Make sure you sign in so we know you're watching by putting your name in the comments, saying hi to someone, just liking it just somehow so that we know that you're there and we can account for you. Thank you. Also, if, uh, online, if you have any uh, uh, prayer requests, you can type those into the comments and uh, please try to do it at least by the beginning of the sermon. That way... Uh, Lauren has time to uh, uh, write them down and have them prepared. Yes, ma'am. Uh, reminder about signing the card. Oh, yeah, and a reminder about signing the card for uh, our uh, church. It comes up during prayer time, but thanks anyway. And uh, some of you are already doing it, but you can also sign it when you first come in, and that way 
uh, there's not as much of a line at the end. Um, we, we got a thank you note from Zion Lutheran. It's on the uh, bulletin board outside the office. So um, it's, uh, it's a new practice, but uh, I think it's good. And, it, and if you would like a, a copy of the prayer that's in the uh, uh, card, there are these little cards back there that have that, but they have the, uh, of course, a blank where the names are. Um, you take this and you can keep this, and then the names are in the bulletin uh, every week, usually right inside the first page, I think. Yep. Prayer Church for the Week, North Manchester Missionary Church. Any more? Any other announcements? And now let us. Oh. What? Oh, well, yeah. Oh, yeah. And that one. The most important announcement. The Atlantic Coast Conference has a new champion this year. And it just happens to be Georgia Tech. So. So if I fall asleep during the sermon, that's why. Um, the game, it was the last, well actually it wasn't the last game scheduled because one of the West of the Pacific Conference, Pac-10, Pac-12, Pac-8, whatever they are, Pac something, theirs didn't start till 11 o'clock here, but this one didn't get over till 11.30, which was really 12.30 today, so I got to bed kind of late. Um, yeah. Uh, also, today is UMCOR Sunday. Thank you. Uh, and um, uh, if uh, you aren't prepared to give today, that's fine. We can, you can give any time, any time really, but it's particularly over the next few weeks. But here's another little information video. Did you know when you donate to the UMCOR Sunday offering long-term sustainable development, U.S. and international disaster relief, global migration, and global health. As followers of Jesus Christ, we are called to respond with extravagant grace. Through the United Methodist Committee on Relief, we are able to make a difference in the lives of communities and individuals whose lives have been upset by storms, wars, fires, displacement, and climate change. This offering underwrites UMCOR's cost of doing business, allowing UMCOR to keep the promise that 100% of any gift to a specific UMCOR project will go toward that project, not administrative costs. UMCOR specializes in solutions that help people become self-reliant. Help us be a source of help and hope for those in need. Your gift helps UMCOR stay until recovery is complete. Give in person, by mail, or online at umc.org slash ssgive. There should be uh, an explanation. It gives a little more information in your bulletin. You can use that envelope for your gift or just use that for information. Uh, if you want to make your gift a part of your regular giving and write one check, that's fine. Just make sure you put in the memo how much goes where and the counters will put it there. Now, are there any other announcements? None? Okay. Let us prepare our hearts for worship as we listen to the prelude.
Good morning. Our call to worship this morning, if you would please join with me. We look for help. I'm sorry, please stand if you're able and worship. Wrong paper, sorry. Okay. We look for help. Where will it come from? Our help will come from the Lord who created the heavens and the earth. Let our hearts rejoice in God's kindness and love. Our opening hymn this morning is Lift High the Cross. The words will be on the screen. lesson taken from the 21st chapter of Numbers, the people's complaining brought death in the form of serpents, yet God offered healing. They marched from Mount Hor to the Red Sea Road around Edom. The people became impatient on the road. The people spoke against God and Moses. 
Why did you bring us from Egypt to kill us in the desert, where there is no food or water, and we detest this miserable bread? So the Lord sent poisonous snakes among the people, and they bit the people. Many of the Israelites died. The people went to Moses and said, We've sinned, for we've spoke against the Lord and you. Pray to the Lord so that he will send the snakes away from us. So Moses prayed for the people. The Lord said to Moses, Make a poisonous snake and place it on a pole. Whoever is bitten can look at it and live. Moses made a bronze snake and placed it on a pole. If a snake bit someone, that person could look at the bronze snake and live. Now we'll enjoy our special music. Just a couple, or one commercial anyway. Um, we are, we have started choir. Um, I've had a couple people say they're retiring from the choir. So we don't have as many as what we've had before. And some of the college students or university students we've relied upon, they are not going to be able to help us out like they have in the past. Um, so if, if any of you can help us out, please come 745 Wednesday. And then also, we are going to try to be in the fellowship hall. And with that in mind, I have a piano over here that are on rollers that after the service, if a few of you could help move that, it's going to be an easy move over the fellowship hall. Really appreciate it. So thank you very much. I got a text this morning about 109 from Ben Tipton. <laughs> ben and I were going to play a, a, a duet, and uh, it was, it's do Lord. It's, it's a wonderful duet. Um, but he couldn't, uh, couldn't be here today. And before I read that, I got up in my mind. I kept having the, the hymn in the garden go through my mind. And I'm thinking, why is that? Well, I think I know. <laughs> and I thought, wait a minute, spring is just right around the corner. So Pam and I are going to do a couple of the, uh, the old favorite um, garden songs. There's a garden where Jesus is waiting There's a place that is wondrously fair For it glows with the light of his presence Tis the beautiful garden of prayer Oh, the beautiful garden, the garden of prayer Oh, the beautiful garden of prayer. There my Savior awaits, and he opens the gates to the beautiful garden of prayer. There's a garden where Jesus is waiting, and he bids you to come meet him there. Just to bow and receive a new blessing In the beautiful garden of prayer Oh, the beautiful garden, the garden of prayer Oh, the beautiful garden of prayer There my Savior awaits and he opens the gates to the beautiful garden of prayer. I come to the garden alone While the dew is still on the roses And the voice I hear Falling on my ear The Son of God discloses And he walks 
with me and he talks with me and he tells me I am his own and the joy we share as we tarry there none other has ever known he speaks and the sound of his voice is so sweet the birds hush their singing and the melody that he gave to me within my heart is ringing and he walks with me and he talks with me and he tells me I am his own and the joy we share as we tarry there none other has ever known I'd stay in the garden with him though the night around me be flowing but he bids me go through the voice of woe his voice to me is calling and he walks with me and he talks with me and he tells me i am his own and a joy we share as we tarry there none other has ever known Well, Mr. McKee, I'm sorry your friend couldn't come, but we certainly all benefited from that. So thank you very much. That was beautiful. Will you please stand as you're able for the reading of the gospel? In from the third chapter of the gospel of John, Nicodemus comes to Jesus in the night and Jesus tells him, you must be born again. Please join in the reading where the print on the screen is bold and noted for all. There was a Pharisee named Nicodemus, a Jewish leader. He came to Jesus at night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher who has come from God, for no one could do these miraculous signs that you do unless God is with him. Jesus answered, I assume you, unless someone is born anew, it's not possible to see God's kingdom, Nicodemus asked. How is it possible for an adult to be born? It's impossible to enter the mother's womb for a second time and be born, isn't it? Jesus answered, I assure you, unless someone is born of water and the spirit, it's not possible to enter God's kingdom. Whatever is born of the flesh is flesh, and whatever is born of the spirit is spirit. Don't be surprised that I have said to you, you must be born anew. God's spirit blows wherever it wishes. You hear its sound, but you don't know where it comes from or where it is going. It's the same with everyone who is born of the spirit. Nicodemus said, How are all these things possible? And Jesus answered, you are a teacher of Israel and you don't know these things? I assure you that we speak about what we know and testify about what we have seen, but you don't receive our testimony. If I, told, if I have told you about earthly things and you don't believe, how will you believe if I tell you about heavenly things? 
No one has gone up to heaven except the one who came down from heaven, the Son of Man. Just as Moses lifted up the snake in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, so that everyone who believes in him will have eternal life. God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him won't perish, but will have eternal life. God didn't send his, send his Son into the world to judge the world, but that the world might be saved through him. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. You may be seated as we sing our Lenten hymn of preparation, Dear Lord, Lead Me Day by Day. The words will be on the screen. <laughs> and strong, happy most of all to know that my dear Lord loves me so. Praise the Lord, found of love, praise from morning to set of sun, praise at home, praise in church, praise to God everywhere on earth. Dear lead me day by day, Follow and obey faithfully your words of life that your love ever abide. Praise the Lord, found of love. Praise from morning the set of sun. Praise at home, praise in church, praise to God everywhere on earth. Now with confidence I sing. Praises to our God, and with upright heart I give tender care and sympathy. Praise to God, found of love. Praise from morning to set of sun. Praise at home, praise in church, praise to God everywhere on earth. Periodically, someone will ask most preachers, including myself, why do you bother to preach from the Old Testament? Especially an odd story like the one today. Well, today I have a specific answer because I can say our story today seemed important to Jesus, at least according to to John's Gospel. So maybe shouldn't it be important to us? Not to mention that what we call the Old Testament or the Hebrew Bible is all that Jesus knew when he spoke of Scripture. It's our lesson from the Gospel of John, though, that helps us to understand this strange little story about snakes. In one way, the story of Nicodemus coming to Jesus is just another occasion for Jesus to predict his death in the doorway that it opens for all of us. And by another occasion, not that it's repetitive, but instead, it's a signal to pay attention here. This is important. Our worship, especially today, then must be centered around the offering that Christ made of himself for all. But integral to both of these readings today is the call to commitment. 
And that's what look up and live means. Now, look up doesn't sound much like a commitment, but it's a call to move out of ourselves and allow someone else to take the lead, to be at the center of our very being. Look up means seeing the hope for your own life, the lives of those you love, the, indeed the whole world. A hope that's found only in the person of Jesus Christ and his redeeming grace. And I'd be the first to admit, I'm not about to preach that this lesson of snakes from the book of Numbers without also referring to the gospel lesson. Because it's John's explanation of this story that brings it all together for our Lenten journey. Jesus references this story from Numbers as, as a way of explaining what well, what he was here to do. It's the first reference in the Gospel of John to being lifted up and, and, and goes back to this weird little story about snakes and poison and grumbling people. After all, what could be more uplifting than a story about poisonous snakes? That sounds like something Nicodemus would ask. Maybe we need to ask ourselves, what, what would cause Jesus to make reference to this snakes in the desert th story that leads him then to, to express probably the most famous verse in the whole Bible? How did we get to that point? Well, it all started with Nicodemus. Nicodemus was a leader of the people of God. He was a, a Pharisee and a, and a member of the Sanhedrin, the, the governing body of the Jews during the Roman occupation. He comes to Jesus at night. Now, I do remember in seminary, the library didn't open till 9 in the morning, but it stayed open until 1 in the morning, so maybe night is the right time for studious work, I don't know. More likely, Nicodemus was afraid of being associated with this questionable rabbi from the backwoods of Galilee. He comes with social niceties, even offers a bit of flattery to kind of grease the, the conversation, but Jesus immediately changes the subject, puts Nicodemus on the defensive. And Jesus tells him, you need to become a different person if you want to be a part of what God is doing. What? Nicodemus is wondering if he heard Jesus right. He, he, he spends the whole rest of the conversation with Jesus trying to catch up. He even comes back with a, I don't know, a feeble joke about climbing back into his mother's womb. Probably trying to disarm some of the intensity of Jesus' statement. Because he had just said that being a different person is... is, is is in some way tied to being born again? That's what Jesus said, born again or born from above. The word in Greek has both meanings. It's a reference to, to time and direction. Be born again. As if the first time wasn't traumatic enough. Be born again. As if the first time wasn't full of all the potential it needed to be. Be born again and, and as if drawing breath like never before. But this time fill your lungs with more than air. Breathe in the spirit as well.
spirit from above. Well, as if we're, we can be a little too focused on this world. It's the one we live in, right? It's the one that's right in front of us that we can see. Because if we can't see it, and if it's not right there, then anything invisible isn't real. Anything invisible like love and hope and joy and transformation and possibility. You see, anything invisible isn't what life is about if, if you're only born from below. Now, it's not a bad life, it's just a shallow life. Just a nose to the grindstone, trying to find meaning in what successes and failures we have to deal with each and every day. And it has nothing to do with the love of the Creator who stands by to fill us with the vision of His kingdom. Let go, Nicodemus, Jesus is saying. Let go of your need to be in control. Good thing he wasn't talking to me. Let go of your need to have everything your way. Let go of the belief that you can build a better world, a more vibrant world, by shaping it along the lines of your personal preferences and understandings. Instead, take hold of the Spirit and, and be blown about. From one world to the next, from one joy to the next, from one soul to the next. Be born into a new way of, of seeing. Let go of what was, no matter how satisfying you thought it was. And grab hold of where, where God is, is calling you to go and who God is calling you to be. One of my favorite commentators enjoys paraphrasing Jesus, and he has one here. He puts it this way, Jesus' words. I'm not telling you anything new, Nicodemus. I've been saying these things since I got here, since the beginning of time. This is all I have to say. This is all I know. This God thing, this vision of the people of God, the, the community of faith. I have not stopped saying this. And you're a leader of the people and somehow don't get it? How can this be, Nicodemus? What did you miss? Because get ready, it's about to get even more intense. Well, Jesus gave Nic Nicodemus a whole lot to think about. We don't know how it all affected him or what he went away with that night. We don't get any kind of report. But a few chapters later in the Gospel of John, when the rest of the Jewish leadership is complaining that the temple police didn't arrest Jesus for speaking about the kingdom of God, Nicodemus is the one who speaks up for Jesus. And, and, and says again in the words of the paraphrase, wait, don't we believe in due process? Now, Nicodemus doesn't give anything that could be considered an affirmation of faith, but at least he attempts to stand on the side of right. And yet, the entire Sanhedrin that was gathered sneered at Nicodemus and accused him of being a hick from the sticks like this Jesus. And at that point, Nicodemus shrinks completely from sight. Well, not completely. He just never speaks again in the gospel. But he does show up again one day in the darkness, the afternoon darkness of a weeping world. And he gathers up the body from a horrible death. And he wraps it 
up with, with, with about 75 pounds of spices and puts the body in somebody else's tomb. Now, that's all typical, except 75 pounds of spices. You know, the, the spices they, they used for burial back then were there for two reasons. One, cover up the smell. But two, they were fertilizer. They want to help the bacteria that are naturally on your skin that your body is no longer fighting to hurry up and eat all the flesh. Because they didn't bury you whole, they only buried your bones. So that, it, we know from other writers of the time that 75 pounds, that, that's overkill. That's overdoing it. Way overdoing it. Maybe in a way, for Nicodemus, it was apology spice. Maybe Nicodemus finally understands what he had missed in that first night in the darkness and wanted to make up for it by bringing so much that he could barely carry it. It's, it's a penance of spice poured out over a dead body that, although he doesn't know yet, isn't going to stay dead. Because... Now we're back to where we need to be. Nicodemus finally had the courage or the faith or both to look up and live. That story from the book of Numbers, it isn't about snakes. And it's not about worshiping a bronze idol at the top of a stick. It's about acknowledging that we need help. We need a savior. And it's about obedience to the only one who can rescue you from whatever is killing you. You just need to look up and live. And it's not very difficult to look up at a snake on top of a stick. Not even that hard to... Look at a man dying on a cross. And yet one of the hardest things we can ever do as independent thinking human beings is to surrender ourselves to that which will save us rather than thinking we can do it ourselves. It is in admitting that in our lives there's, there's poison and it's in our system, and it will kill us if we don't do something radical, something desperate. Like giving up control. It isn't hard to ima imagine what was going through the Hebrew people's minds. They're told to, oh, if you get bit by a snake, which they're all over, go over to where Moses is. He has this stick you look at. Without question, their prayer was that, that God would simply move the snakes out of the way so that they can be on their way to the promised land. But God didn't do that. God chose a different way. God left the snakes there and left them vulnerable to a poison that would kill them. Yet God gave them a remedy, a solution to the danger that surrounded them. If you will, a savior. All they needed to do, all we need to do, is to look up and live. So be it. 
our response to God's word is to share our joys and concerns with one another. Uh, a few updates. Uh, Pam McKee is doing better and heading for a biopsy this week. Next week, okay. 23rd. So keep her in your prayers. Um, Rebecca Bollinger continues with her periodic chemo treatments, but is now in a 20-day daily radiation treatment course. Course of radiation. There we go. I knew there was a verb I needed, or a noun I needed in there. Uh, Britton Webb is doing a little better, but still keep him in your prayers. Um, Jane, have they ever solved the grain mill problems? Are they going to? Okay. So we'll continue there with the farmers and legislators and the lawyers who are making tons of money out of this all around the bankruptcy of the Salomone Grain Mill. Um, let's see. Anything else to update? How's Jim Earp doing? Okay. After his back surgery, he's doing well. Okay. That's good to hear. Let's see what else. Uh, Valerie Clarkston had asked us to uh, pray for her grandchildren's other grandmother, Mary Jane Setzer, uh, who was in the hospital with pneumonia and COVID. She's now home recovering, so that's good news. Alan Binkert is home recovering from his fall. Um, continue prayers for the Olivia Floor family, the young girl who died in the fire. Um, her father, Aaron Floor, and his family are related to Rita's, so uh, keep them in your prayers. Uh, Kathy French continues con ask con for continued prayers for the family uh, following the death of her grandson, Ryan Henderson. We got anything, Lauren, from Facebook? Um, Jane Frieden is asking for continued prayers for her daughter-in-law's mother, Nikki Wellgoss. Um, her cancer has returned for the third time. She's quite depressed, so she would like prayers to help her with those things. And that is all I have. Okay. I need to come back and get that mic from you. Are there any others? Yeah, this is Pat Meyer. I'd ask for prayers for Art Eubel. Uh, he's the father of my youngest goddaughter. And uh, yesterday he fell and knocked his head and knocked himself out. And right now he's under observation there in New Jersey. Let me pin her on. I want continued prayers for my family, for my brother. He's got to go back and forth to Warsaw for treatments every twice a day. Wow. Okay. Anybody else? Pastor Steve. Hello. Oh. Several of you asked me uh, how things are going at school, so I thought I would just share with you that Things at school are really well. They're really good. Our students are really resilient, and they want to be there, and they are doing a great job. It is not easy for them every day. Um, they are wearing masks, and but our social distancing now has gone from six feet to three feet. And believe me, that's huge in our building. That is absolutely huge. Um, so. I'm not asking for prayers for teachers. I'm asking for prayers for normalcy so we can get back to a normal school day so children of all ages can do what they're supposed to be doing. And, um, but I would just say this. I was fortunate enough to be able to take 30 students to a contest yesterday, and they had to be wearing masks, and they had to be distanced and stuff. But when they were presenting, they got to take their mask off. And I was just amazed at how well those kids do 
no matter what we ask of them, they still deliver, they still do great things. And so uh, be proud of the kids that are out there going to school and all the things that they're doing, no matter what is asked of them. Anything else? All right, our, uh, again, our church that we're praying for this week is I got it. North Manchester Missionary Church, Pastor Ken. Uh, keep them in your prayers. Uh, sign the prayer card, and there's the little prayer that for that church and its ministries there if you'd like a copy of that. Um, let us now in our time of prayer join together in our unison prayer of confession. The words will be on the screen after the call to reconciliation. Um, it is responsive. Your parts are um, in the uh, dark print. So let us pray. In becoming one of us, God became poor, so we of mercy. In coming to us, God took on our death, so we could be made alive together with Christ. Come, offer your confessions, knowing that by grace you have been saved. Let us pray. The words we speak all, all too often do not show you in our lives, God of our pilgrimage. We spend so much time boasting to others. They imagine we have no need for you. We grumble impatiently when you don't respond immediately to our requests, but are slow to sing your praises. We mutter under our breath about the behavior of those around us when we could be asking them if there is some way we could serve them. It is on our journey to the cross and the tomb that you will fill us with the riches of your mercy, steadfast love. You do so not because of anything we have done, but because of the compassion which flows from your heart wounded by our failings. As we open our lives to receive your forgiveness, may we turn to the light which brings us life following Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, every step of the way. How much does God love us? Enough to send the divine heart, hope, and spirit to us, not to condemn us, but to save us. Not by our speaking or doing, but by God's good and precious grace are we saved. Thanks be to God. Amen. And now let us join together in the prayer that Jesus taught. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. We continue our worship with the giving of our tithes and all. Uh, as we no longer pass the plate, someday we'll get back to normal. And, uh, but uh, in the meantime, there is a plate in the back. You may drop off, uh, for those of you here, your offerings, your tithes. For those of you online, um, mail service is great, and we love it when our mailbox is full of uh, notes. And uh, once in a while, uh, Deborah, our uh, 
administrative assistant is the one who uh, opens all those up to find out where they need to go. And uh, write her a note sometime, that'll, that'll surprise her. Because she, she, she won't know I said that. Just say hi, how you doing, Deborah, miss you, or whatever. Um, or Pastor Steve made me do this, or whatever. Um, just, that'll make her day. Um, our offertory sentence this morning, Psalm, know that the Lord is God. It is he that made us, and we are his. We are his people, the sheep of his pasture. Let us consider those words as we listen to the offertory. Lord, we give you strength that as we look up and live the life you have called us to do, we find that the many gifts we have have been given us to use for the sake of others in your name. Bless these gifts. Amen. Please remain standing as we sing our hymn of invitation, Oh, for a heart to praise my God. The words will be on the screen.
Please join me in our blessing. Live as people made by God for good works. Life in God openly in the light so all may see. Celebrate God's love with a sacrifice of praise and tell your story of salvation with joy. And may God show you the immeasurable riches of his grace. May Christ lead you into the life prepared for you. And may the Spirit gift you with faith for salvation. We go in peace to love and serve God in the name of Christ. And we go having been given all that we need. Because all that we need is the love of God. Go in peace. Amen. Thank you.